he pressed a button and all things went crazy. Um, <clears throat> okay, so back for another live stream. Yes, I know the title is con kind of strange, but uh, I couldn't think of anything else to say other than mastering this sack. <clears throat> you will find the start time for this video down in the description of this video because that's the sort of thing I do. Um, you will find though that my live streams are usually unlisted, so you have to be subscribed to my channel, also hit the bell button, have your notifications turned on, and then you can access them later on if you can't stay for the whole thing, which is fine, totally understand. Uh, my patrons, they all get access to the live streams, and I do put out an edited version of this, so you can go and watch it if you don't want to sit through the entire live stream, but the edited version does not include the intro, which is where I'm sort of waffling right now, and then all of the Q&A or questions and answers where the rest of the community provide really juicy information. Okay, now if you haven't been part of my live streams before, well, uh, normally I present everything first, showing you a variety of uh, sinister images, I don't know, kind of crazy images, sometimes they make sense, sometimes they don't, but I'm going to show you a whole lot of slides, and then you will see my face at the end, if you really must, at the beginning, at the end, face, get rid of these because I don't need them. Hi Darren, uh, Kanoko, how's it going? Phil Swift, Destroyer of Worlds. Okay, Swift. Um, Phil Swift, you are now my new NPC name because um, Phil Swift, Destroyer of Worlds, awesome name. Going to take that, going to put that in a Dungeons and Dragons game sometime. Um, hi Scott, how's it going? Grab a drink, a beverage, whatever it is you want to call it, um, some food, settle down and... Um, not going to be doing the Rubik's Cube, but we will be doing the Mastering of the Empty Sack. <laughs> Hi Timothy, how's it going? Alright, let's flick over and get started. Hi, welcome to How to D&D. My name is Fred Wheeler and today I want to talk about Dungeons and Dragons 5e, or just Dungeons and Dragons. Although for today, this is a topic long waited for the mastering of the empty sack in dungeons and dragons 5e this is the kind of topic that everybody's been looking for on the internet searching tirelessly finding every opportunity to look through reddit and the internet found nothing probably and then you looked in the player's handbook and of course there's not a sodding thing in the player's handbook on how to use your sack so Good news is, I'm the kind of channel that deals with these sorts of issues, and uh, we're going to talk about that today. Okay, so how to use your empty sack should be obvious, but really, is it obvious how to use an empty sack? Of course, it's not going to stay empty forever. There might be a chance to actually put something in it. But here is my list of uh, various things that you can use a sack for in Dungeons & Dragons. First off, you can use the sack for carrying stuff when your pack is full. Ho ho! I can just see the number of people running away thinking, oh, I kind of knew that one already, Fred. You didn't need to tell me. I can figure that one out. Um, okay, all right, so you can also use it. It's kind of handy for catching ducks and chickens if you want to have like lunch or dinner uh, rather than using your hand sometimes. Ducks and chickens like to peck or um, bite you. I don't know that the teeth on a duck are particularly dangerous, but I've found that using something like a, a blanket is useful, but a sack will do in a pinch if you can't, can't uh, use a, a towel or uh, some sort of a blanket. I feel the blanket's a better idea. For those downtime activities, you can use your sack Provided you can find some play and people who do play with, uh, go for a sack race. You could spend your downtime in Dungeons and Dragons having sack races. I know, you're thinking, why didn't I think of this? You can put a sack over the head of your enemies while you're trying to transport them from wherever they are to your base. Or you can just use it as sort of like a, a makeshift blindfold. Of course, Often the sack over the head and tied to the chair is followed by other things, but I will get into those a little bit later on. You can also apparently use a sack as a water filter for straining stuff. So if you've got some liquid that you need to strain and get rid of all the little 
itty bitty gritty bits inside it you can use the porous nature of your sack to actually strain whatever is in the liquid get rid of all the little loose chunky bits out of it and straining water seems like a sensible thing to do this is by far my favorite one though uh, this is i'm going to call this number six you can use a sack by just making a hole in the bottom of it and you have yourself a dress hemp fashion who would have guessed that you could do something like that and nowadays apparently people still use sacks to make dresses <laughs> okay all right okay i'm a bit of i'm poking a bit of fun at things you can also use a sack as a disguise so if you want to dress up as a street hobo or um, bum or something like that or just disguise yourself as a scary monster chuck in a bit of straw fill yourself out make you a bit add a bit of bulk put on a mask and you have yourself a disguise and now you can just scare the monsters off rather than fight them and all it took was a little bit of straw a sack and a mask and you're done piece of cake nothing to it okay so we started off with the sack over the head and well kind of and uh, sitting in a chair often waterboarding is quoted you can use a sack for waterboarding i'm not going to go into details i'm just going to say interrogation you know the rest okay the cia's been using it for years apparently okay next one you can fill a sack with sand to make sandbags that can be stacked on top of each other to create a wall of sand sandbags and that gives you something to hide behind or use as cover unless of course you're the kind of player who likes to stand out in the open and get shot with arrows and magic if that's the sort of thing don't worry about the sandbags but if you've got plenty of time to fill them up with sand you could do that sort of thing uh, you can also use use a sandbag or a series of sandbags by uh, sort of lining them up around a building or structure to stop flooding or water getting in i know what you're thinking fred um, people do this in real life what is when am i ever going to use this in dungeons and dragons i don't know i just had to find something and i've added this because somebody mentioned it on facebook and i thought fine i'm sticking it in uh, next back to fashion we can take that sack cut two holes in it in the bottom and you now have a pair of pants make sure you get something like a rope bit of rope or a belt to tie up the top otherwise that sack is going to fall off your backside real fast there's no way it's going to stay up you can also back to fashion again cut three holes in the bottom of the sack and create a shirt or you could just use the sacking material to make a shirt i guess like the one i'm showing you right now but you don't have to get that fancy if you want buttons that's fine if you don't want buttons that's fine too uh I'm from New Zealand so here we have the the hungy pit and you just lay out your stones in the bottom of a pit and then you put your food on top of it and often there's some leaves involved as well wrapping things up and so forth but then we put sacks uh, I know you can use old blankets but a sack is a good thing you never use polyester that's a bad idea once you've got the sacks on top you then cover it over with dirt and you have a, a place for cooking food in the ground with hot rocks and sacks and a bit of dirt pretty simple nothing to it you can also use a sack for starting a campfire either intentionally or unintentionally i will let you fill in the gaps with regard to that you can cut just one corner out of the sack make sure to have filled it up with some flour and now you can leave a trail of flour as you are traveling for your enemies to follow you leading them into an ambush so you can then surprise them and butcher them like dogs or you could also use it just to lay out a trail so you don't get stuck or um, lost in some sort of horrible forest probably a much more useful application rather than the first one that i stated but i thought i would state both because who knows what you will do in your game take that sack and stick it on your feet it's now going to allow you to hide your tracks instead of having to use a brush you know you know what i'm talking about a stick 
or um, a bit of brush off a tree as you hide your tracks as you're traveling. Just wear sacks on your feet. Otherwise, if you feel that's not gonna work, try wearing sacks on your boots or shoes to reduce the amount of noise they create when you're sneaking around in the dungeons trying to get the drop on some sort of monster or baddie or NPC. So, reducing noise is always a good one too. You can cut a hole or more than one hole depending on how many eyes you have, allowing you a place to look through and this will give you a DIY or do-it-yourself mask. I, this one has only got one hole so I'm assuming he has only one eye. If you have two eyes, make sure to cut two holes. All right, you can also use it as a, a tourniquet. You know, you've got a wound, it's bleeding, and you need to stop the bleeding, and you don't know what to do, well, you just tie that sack around your leg or your arm or wherever it needs to be tied and cut off the blood supply so that it doesn't leak out everywhere. Okay, you are prone to cutting off monster body parts, and you need somewhere to store them. Well, you don't want to go sticking them in your pack. That's just disgusting, and nobody's going to let you stick, their, stick those body parts from the monsters in the bag of holding or the handy haversack. So, get yourself a sack, and you can stick your body parts, whether it be a head from a medusa, a finger, an ear, a nose, or whatever it is you currently have decided you should collect. Stick it in the sack, and that's where it can stay. A sack can also be used if you tear it up, create bandages for uh, uh, dealing with wounds and injuries. Uh, particularly when, I mean, I, I don't know if it's got any mechanical aspect to it with regard to the uh, healer's kit. It's probably not as good as a healer's kit, and I would imagine it would require a significant amount of pizza and bribery uh, leveled at your dungeon master to make it do the same things as a healer's kit, but you can use sacking as a dressing for a wound if you really wanted to. Let's start getting into traps. How can we use it for a trap? You can use a sack to cover the outside pit trap you have dug. It'll be the first layer on top of the uh, sticks and branches that you have crisscrossed over your hole and then you put your sacking over, and then you put your layer of leaves over the top of that so that the leaves don't fall through the holes that your sticks have made. Otherwise you would have to lay quite a lot of sticks, but you don't have to do that if you have sacking. So therefore, make sure to take many sacks, not just one. A number of sacks can be used for a variety of different things. Now I've said the sandbag, but you can also use a number of sacks as a makeshift blanket or bedding. So if you forget your bed roll or it gets washed down the river or you suddenly somebody decided to throw it at a monster and it ate it or it got torn to shreds or you had to use it for something else, then you can use your sacking as a blanket or bedding. You can also fill that sack with rocks. Why would you do that? Fill the sack with rocks it's now an improvised weapon, swing it around and whack it into your monsters and enemies and knocking them hopefully prone and doing a bit of damage. It's probably only going to be like what, 1d4 plus whatever your strength modifier is in terms of your damage output. And you're not going to be proficient in sack swinging unless of course you've got really funky and decided to take a particular feat. But you can certainly use it for an improvised weapon if you really wanted to. Take that sack and it now becomes a very light, portable and quite useful tool for sliding down a slope. So if for some reason you need to get down that hill very fast and you don't have a piece of cardboard with you, use a sack. Uh, if you have a, a shield, a shield makes a better slide than something like a sack, but in a pinch a sack can be, can be used. Okay, so you've got a bit of downtime, you need to do a bit of training, and you need a, a DIY or do-it-yourself sack punching bag. Fill it with sand, or I wouldn't say fill it with rocks. You could, you could potentially fill it with uh, potatoes and, uh, and then punch that. It could be for training, or it could be just for simple recreation. Totally up to you. And the most obvious is that you can use your sack 
to hold flour so you can make bread. Or you can then use the flour for a number of other purposes and I did a whole video on how to use flour in Dungeons and Dragons. Possibly that video on how to use flour in Dungeons and Dragons is more useful than the sack video. You'll uh, have to make that assessment yourself, but I would recommend checking out the flour video. It's not too bad. Now, if you found this video helpful, informative and useful, fantastic. If you didn't, I apologize for wasting your time. Um, if you want to see more content like this that I keep pumping out, from time to time, probably like once a week or once a month, then um, you can support me by using my Patreon page. That's down in the description. I have affiliate links to the book depository and Amazon if you're not interested in that. And uh, basically anything you buy from those locations, I get a small commission. I also have uh, swag or merchandise underneath all of my videos you can also purchase if you want at a pretty reasonable price. Uh, make sure to share, like and subscribe. Hit the bell button to be notified when I go live and when I publish new videos. And hey, till next time, keep rolling those 20s. I'm not gone, but I need some water. Okay, so today was a bit of tongue in cheek. There are some useful applications for the sack, and I'm sure somebody will add them to there to the um, conversation um, and some of these were I was trying to be serious not all of them were taken piss okay some of them were, some of them were serious um, I have to say that the sack is a, a tricky thing to, um, to develop because everybody says oh there's so many uses for a sack and then they don't actually tell you what they use the sack for oh okay really there's lots of uses. Oh, it's so useful. It's the, like the most useful item in Dungeons and Dragons. And then they tell you nothing. Nothing. Yes, some of these I made up myself. Some of them I have used myself. Some of them I've just pinched from somebody else. Because why not? That's what we all do. Okay, um, let's get into the uh, into the chat. Please, by all means. Oh, somebody gave me a super chat. Ooh, 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 ooh. Where is that? The Grizzly, thank you, Grizzly. I'm going to just look at your comment and then I will backtrack and go through the live stream. Now, if you have additional things that you would like me to talk about in terms of why a sack is useful, then hey, put it in the, um, the live chat right now. If you can't do it in the live chat, there's always the comment section, right? What do you got here, Grizzly? Uh, turn it into a bag of holding and dump thousands and thousands of snakes inside it. Yeah, but how do you turn a sack into a bag of holding? I don't know how you'd do that. I would just want to have the bag of holding rather than have a bag of holding that looked like a sack. Although, if the bag of holding looks like a sack, then it doesn't look that important and nobody wants to take it off you. Unless, of course, they cast Detect Magic and figure out that it's magical. Magical sacks. Okay. Right, let's have a look here. So we've got Scott. I already said hi to Scott. Phil's here. Phil Swift. Um, Kanoko. Darren. Scott's here. Timothy, I said, I said hi to Timothy. William, hi William. Love what you do. Oh good. Apart from today's video, I bet. Um, prepared to cook and survive. What's in a bag? Uh, and angle. I have no idea. I have no idea. You'll have to tell me. <laughs> okay. What's that, Timothy? I think um, D&D needs more and somehow lacking uh, in storytelling development. I love the, the basic modules though. Yes, you could, William. You could use it as a sleeping bag. It'd have to be a pretty big um, sack and you would have to be pretty small, but you know, somebody like a halfling or a gnome could probably fit in a sack. <clears throat> there were a number of suggestions from people on Facebook when I put this question up, who suggested that taking the sack and getting a gnome and sticking the gnome in the sack and then Tying the sack up and then throwing it at the monsters was a good idea. I almost put that on the list, but I thought like I might be pushing my luck, so I left it off. Uh, okay, so back through here. Timothy, what do you got here? Um, get a deck of blank cards and mention each one. See it, what? See it published as a comic book shop. 
but make your own based on information in the player's guide. <laughs> it's a kidnap sack. Yes, that's right, kidnapping sack. Imagine, I'm going to show that, that's fine. Not a problem with that, happy with that, that's good. What? Really? Coffee filter of many uh, miracles. Yes, yes, the, the, the sack is a, is a filter. Do we need to, we always have to make sure we filter that coffee correctly. <clears throat> um, good man, Fred, you uh, can camp with me. Okay, oh, that's good. All right, I haven't been camping for a long time. I don't, do people actually camp now? When people go camping in my country, we used to take a tent and a sleeping bag and some stuff to do some cooking and some food. And nowadays, apparently, um, camping involves a microwave, a TV, a bed, a cabin. Who has a cabin? Um, Wi-Fi. Somebody said something about Wi-Fi, and I said, how the heck? The whole point of going camping in the first place is not to have Wi-Fi. I mean, I suppose you could insist on having Wi-Fi satellite stuff, but you want an actual Wi-Fi connection when you go camping. So um, I feel like the concept of camping is lost on a lot of people. I think they should just stay at home. Rather than go camping, stay at home. If you're going to camp, do it properly. Um, okay, what else we've got here? Car pull the line passenger as a, at a motorway. <laughs> okay, yes, Halloween culture idea. Oh, well, that's, that's, you know, that's the cut a hole in the, in the sack and use it as a mask sort of thing, right? <clears throat> Um, sack filled for defences. Yes, defence from uh, arrows, projectiles, water, lots of different things. Reminds me of 90s Ren and Stimpy. Mmm. I haven't watched Ren and Stimpy in a long time. I do know that um, for those of you who are expecting me to do a video on multiple rules and Dungeons and Dragons and how to exploit and utilise them correctly, uh, it's not the video for today. Instead, you get the sack. Um, my party did that once, did they? Okay. Find a small gunny sack and cover somebody's action figure during the gameplay. I'm, I'm lost, Timothy, but if I, I figure it out, you let me know. <laughs> um, Alec, how's it going? I've recently been stuck with a question of what to use gold for. Alec, I did a video on that topic. So did uh, WebDM, uh, so did oh, Nerdarchy, uh, and then I think was it RuneSmith did one. There's a whole bunch of them. Um, I've been watching a bunch of videos, but it seems it's uh, mostly for RPG purposes. Did you watch my video, Alec, on uh, how to use your gold? Because I did one on how to use your gold, and it's pretty extensive. And I'm, I don't think I spent half an hour talking about the topic. So you, you should be able to find time to watch it. <laughs> uh, Timothy, um, economy uses, uh, uses gold having more value than silver and more so than copper. Yes, but the thing about copper is, copper's something you can throw to a uh, rust monster to keep them busy while you run away. And it's good for... Um, <clears throat> For those of you who are insistent on making your money go further, I know that uh, I had some players who had a lot of copper pieces and they wanted to colour their copper pieces gold and then use them as currency because they didn't have quite enough cash on them. So that's not hard. Press to digitation, um, change its colour. You can paint them. Somebody bought some gold paint one time and, uh, and painted a whole lot of things gold and then sort of divvied them up to people using it as currency. Not a good idea for long-term relationships with your NPCs, but as long as you never meet them again, it's not a problem. Uh, same as you use money. Yes, um, Rogue might like this video. I don't know who Rogue is, but okay. If he likes the video, awesome. Your Rogue, somebody else's Rogue. Um, Grizzly, how do you turn sack into a bag of holding? Uh, yeah, that's. Uh, I was wondering about that myself. Love the Jason reference. Yes, I was trying not to um, put Jason's face up there completely. <laughs> um, percentage of use points, zero. 
I mean, I mean, percentage of use points. Um, and roll to determine where and tier during the game round. Uh, it takes so much to do. I'm not too sure what that's all mean. I'm going to skip past it because I'm lost. Sack over a cover? Over a shield? Over a shield? I'm not, I guess you could. I'm not sure. Is that to hide the shield? I suppose I suppose you could. I hadn't really, I'm not sure how that was, was going to work. Maybe a jestful comment. What class would you make someone using flower power? <laughs> How would a player use it in a game session? I have no idea, Timothy. I have no idea. Um, but I did use the, the words flower power in one of my videos, so I should know the answer to that, shouldn't I? Okay, you got a real question, Darren? Question regarding <clears throat> the potatoes. Should the players boil them, mash them, or stick them in a stew? No. You want to always use fresh potatoes because fresh potatoes are the hardest. Uh, unless, of course, you're the kind of person who doesn't mind baking them till they go like rock. Because apparently if you cook them long enough, they will go like rock. But they will also shrink, so you'll need a lot more potatoes to go in the sack so it's nice and hard. You don't want soft potatoes. So older potatoes get soft. If you mash them, they're soft. If you cook them, they're soft. So don't stew them and cook them. Timothy, keeps, uh, think, you keep thinking of MacGyver episodes. Well, who would not? I am constantly thinking about MacGyver every time I do these videos. Um, so far, he hasn't been that helpful with regard to the sack. The British have the uh, the Kingsman series. Hmm. Yeah, I, you know, I've watched it. It's kind of funny. I've liked the first part with all the heads exploding. Um, after that, I kind of got bored. Um... But yes, it's not really a... Are we talking about the movies or are we talking a TV series? Because the movies I thought were American. And the TV series, The Kingsman, is a British TV something. I don't watch it. I just don't watch TV, so I wouldn't know. Um, Kenope... <laughs> Never ends. Mm, okay. Uh, portable hole glued to a sack. How does that work, Kenoko? You'll have to explain it to me. I, I'm lost. I use money in real life for uh, food or entertainment. Uh, you can also use it in D&D for rent, daily lifestyle expenses. Oh gosh, don't get me on lifestyle expenses. Um, it's too late. I'm, it's already percolating in my brain now. Uh, but they just become a lot of uh, bookkeeping. Do any of you have concrete examples? Yes, I did a video, Alec. Check out the video. Um, just type in to my channel in the search bar, gold, and poof, there the video will be. Um, okay, so let's talk lifestyle expenses. Who here gives a toss about enforcing and getting their players to use lifestyle expenses? I never remember it, and I just don't give a toss. The only reason that lifestyle expenses exist is for... Dungeons and Dragons Adventurers League so that they can siphon off their money slowly but surely and the other reason you might have it is because you have a dungeon master who likes simulation games and needs to have absolutely everything accounted for and there must be some mechanic there to determine how much money it costs for them to survive in the world as they go from one place to the other. It's really just a shortcut, so you don't have to, you go to the inn and you have to pay one gold piece tonight. That's all we're talking about, really. Um, hi, Wally, how's it going? Don't retract your messages. I hardly get to see the very many, many messages from you as it is, so I want more of them if I can. Okay. Um, Oogie Boogie, the sack cartoon character. I don't know that character. It sounds fun though. Uh, could you make a sack golem? Kanoko. Yep, I could. I could make a sack golem. I was looking for a sack monster, but all I got were little cartoons. And as we know, we do not want to put anything on YouTube that looks anything like it's designed or intended for children nowadays. So, I didn't do that. Um, so if I had to find something that looks like a sack golem, 
but I will build a stat block for a sack golem. Why not? Yep. You find a pile of sacks in the corner. It springs to life and slaps you to death. I'm all for that. Uh, try creating an NPC non-player character such as Yosmit Sam from Warner Bros. I don't know who that is. Who is Yosmit Sam? I've, I'm lost. I've, I don't, haven't watched enough cartoons. Somewhere along the line, I've missed something. I watched those over... Um, over I've, uh, okay, all right, so you've already watched those. Okay, and you've found mine. Uh, wants to find your video on uh, that D&D. &D. Uh, uh, not sure what that is all about. The Sims 3 expansion pack. Where did we get... How do we get to the, Sim, um, the, the Sims? How do, how do we wind up talking about the Sims expansion pack? Timothy, simulation, <laughs> simulation games. I guess, yes, we could go and play Sims, but the whole point of playing Dungeons and Dragons is not to play Sims. If you want the flavor. Yep, I, 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 I don't want the flavor of the Sims. I, I, my Dungeons and Dragons, it's not simulation. Um, it's just some whatever thing I can think of that will be entertaining for the players and for myself. <clears throat> I've got to entertain myself as well at times. Okay, Timothy, um, or forage for something to, to barter, that's just a, as good. Um, yep. I mean, look, you know, catch somebody's chickens and ducks and you can sell them off to somebody else for uh, a couple of coins. Uh, portable hold, portable hold and sack to make cheap bag of holding. Yeah, I'm still lost on that one. Um, Leon Garnett, what do you got here? Hi, looks like I missed uh, this one. Yes, you kind of did, but it's all right because there will be an edited version. And if you have subscribed, hit the bell button and uh, turn notifications on, you'll be able to find it again. So it's not going to be a big problem. So it'll be, it'll be sweet. Fred, I um, realized that, this, uh, that in the title. Yeah, I thought people would get the joke. But sometimes um, when I try to make it obvious that I am doing a joke video, they still think that I'm being serious. This is sort of part and parcel. So I've given up on trying to make it clear that I'm being serious or whether I'm joking because apparently not anybody uh, can figure it out sometimes. So it doesn't matter what I do. So the video is partly tongue in cheek and partly serious. <clears throat> and I've had a rough week. So if I seem like I'm um, a little bit uh, bouncy, it's because I need to let out some steam um, and that's what I'm doing. Elliot, hi Elliot, found your channel and I love it, thanks. I love that you like my channel, I think that's fantastic. <coughs> and Leon Gunnett, if you liked my jokes, good, good. <coughs> they are somewhat dry at times. Uh, night be nightmare Before Christmas, Sack Gollum, Boogie, um, Oogie Boogie, Lemony Snicket book. Uh, right, yeah, okay, all right. I didn't. I have never read those books. Sorry, but now I now I know what you're talking about. Got it. Um, I just don't watch. I mean, I haven't. I'm I'm 48 years old. I haven't watched cartoons for a very long time, and I don't have kids, so I don't have a constant uh, diet of cartoon watching. So that hence I haven't watched as many as uh, maybe somebody else who has kids. I know if you what if you have your own children, you'll be watching a lot of cartoons. Second Life has uh, dun has Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> okay, Wally, what do you got here? Hi, Fred, just joined. Um, let's see. Hmm, empty sack. Okay, what do you got here? My bard could use an empty sack to carry all of his fan mail. Wally, I didn't even think of that. I had no idea. Certainly that is an application for higher level play. Because higher level play characters would have fan mail. Thank you. That's excellent. We'll take that one. Uh, number two. In a dungeon, stuff it with soft items. Like a nice pillow. Yes. Yeah. Can you imagine a dungeon where everything is full of soft toys? Some of the soft toys are nice. And some of the soft toys are not. I feel like we're entering into child-friendly realms now. We're going to move away from that, say. 
but make those soft toys cause grievous pain and damage and injury. <clears throat> Blood and gore. Blood and gore. Okay. Acme Portable Realm Hold. <laughs> okay. All right. Brits are good with um, deadpan uh, facial expressions. Yes. Yes, they, they, have, uh, they have figured it out. Also a joke. Okay, Kanoko, got it. Thank you very much. Yes, I agree. It should be a joke. Drink more beer. Now, drink more water. I can't drink beer. I will swell up and, and explode. <clears throat> Used to be able to. Can't do it anymore. Oh, oh, releasing that. There you go, Timothy. It's It's been released into the dungeon. I mean, <coughs> into the wild. Um, you like the hat? I have more than one hat. I have a couple of hats here, but I've been wearing this one the most. The reason I wear this hat over some of the other ones is some of the other hats are so bright and sparkly. I'll give you an, I'll give you a quick a quick rundown very quickly. So here's the problem with some of my hats is they detract from me. And the only thing you'll be paying attention to is the hat. So a silver hat, putting a silver hat on, you're not going to be listening to what I have to say. Um, you'll not be sort of interested in my face. I mean, not many people are. Only thing you'll be focusing on is the big silver hat. Okay? Then, because I like red, I had to get a red hat. So I got a red hat as well. This one's very tight. Why is it? Is it back to front? No, it's on wrong. No, it seems all right. So, hence, you'd be focused more on the hat rather than on the content. And lastly, uh, well, not lastly, there are more, but I'm not wearing them right now. And then there's a, a blue hat. I have, I have a black uh, top hat, but some of them don't, they sort of poke out of the top of the screen. So it's a little bit difficult at times. Carnivorous toys. No, carnivorous soft toys, mate. Carnivorous soft toys. Congratulations, 50. Um, I didn't know folks exist at that age. Oh, thank you, Timothy. Trust me, mate, the day will come for you as well. Um, <laughs> and I'm not 50 yet. It's coming, but uh, it's not there yet. Um, I love your jokes. Great sense of humor makes a, a great DM. Yes, sometimes it does. I know some players don't like that sort of uh, that sort of thing. They like their, their Dungeons and Dragons gritty and realistic and simulation. Shameless use of corn syrup. Yes, and food dye. Absolutely. Um, such as Violet from Willy Wonka in the factory. Tastes like a uh, three-course meal. Yeah, Elton John. He loves hats. Who doesn't? Okay, I need to wear a hat because I'm going bald and uh, unless I cut my hair really, really short, I kind of look like a hedgehog at times or just like a an unkept um, hobo. So uh, hence, it's easier to do that, put a hat on. And it's also warmer at the right time of the year. Right now it's hot, so it's not going to make any difference. Okay, so um, I've been waffling along. I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to let you guys go and do something else. More constructive than listening to me. Um, so, yes, let's get back to the uh, the image of the sack. So, thank you for joining me. Thank you to my patrons. Thank you for the people who put up with me and watch my stuff. Uh, wherever you are in the world, whether it be the day, the morning, the afternoon, or well, day and afternoon are pretty much the same, night, early morning, look after your family and your friends and yourself, and hey, till next time, keep rolling those 20s. Ha, ha, ha.